Hi, I'm Jim with Stickley on Security, and today I'm going to talk to you about multi-factor authentication and why it's become such an important part of online banking. Now, when you go to log into your online banking account, you're required to enter in your login ID and your password. This information helps confirm who you are and keeps the criminal out. The problem is, criminals continue to find new ways to steal your login credentials. Oftentimes, this is done through viruses and other malware that ends up on your personal computer. To help reduce these risks of the criminals actually gaining access to your online accounts, software companies are continually adding new functionality that helps increase the security of the authentication process. Today, when you're setting up your online account, not only are you required to provide what your login and password will be, you're also required to provide some additional information. This information will often be the answer to several questions or possibly even your cell phone number. Once this information has been gathered, it can then be used at a later point in time as part of the authentication process. This additional level of validation is what's known as multi-factor authentication. In addition, some financial institutions may provide you with additional equipment that you're required to use during the authentication process. No matter what type of multi-factor solution your financial institution deploys, the goal is always the same, and that is to eliminate the risks of criminals gaining access to your account. Many financial institutions are adding additional layers of security into the authentication process. So not only are they going to monitor your login credentials, but they're also actually looking to see where you're physically located. This means that if you log in from home every time you're doing online banking, and then you go on a trip and you try to log in, let's say, from Europe, the system's going to realize you're not where you've always been, and therefore it's going to be a little bit more suspicious, and it's going to require you to do additional levels of authentication. In addition, it will also know the computer you're logging in from. So if you log in from the same computer each time, and then you go out and buy a new computer, again, the system's going to know that, and it's going to be a little bit more suspicious because it's not the computer it recognizes, and again, it's going to require you to do some additional levels of authentication just to make sure that you really are who you claim to be. Now, with all this additional security that's been implemented, you'd think your account would be relatively safe. But unfortunately, criminals are pretty shifty, and they've adapted they realized that they could no longer attempt to hack into your account just through the login and password. So instead what they did was they created malicious software, again, that they could get on your computer through a virus or malware, and that software would just sit on your computer and wait. And the next time you log into your online banking account, the software would then come alive and say, okay, they're now logged in, I can now transfer the money out of their account. So while you might just be checking your balance online, the software would actually be sending other commands to the server saying, please transfer all the money in my account out to somebody else's account. You wouldn't see any of this happening, and by the time you logged out, all the money in your account would be gone. In 2011, new regulations were pushed out that required all financial institutions to increase the level of security in their online applications, which would address this particular type of attack. What they came up with was additional authentication inside of the actual application while you're doing your online banking. So now, whenever you're doing what is deemed as a risky transaction, you're going to be required to do an additional level of authentication. So you might go through the login process in the beginning and type in your login name and your password and whatever, and now you're logged in. While you're logged in, you then decide you want to transfer some money from one account into another account. This could be seen as a risky transaction. So what will happen is when you tell the system, I want to transfer funds from this account into another account, at that point in time, you're going to be required to go through an additional level of authentication to prove you really are who you say you are. By adding this additional level of security, automated programs that were just sitting on your computer can no longer just bypass you and transfer money out of your account. You'll have to still give the authentication and say, I want to approve this money out of my account, and I'm going to prove who I am to do this. While multi-factor authentication might sound a little complicated, fortunately it's designed to be extremely user-friendly. Just remember that while you might have to jump through that extra hoop to validate who you are, and it might take an extra minute, you are greatly reducing the risk that a criminal will gain access to your account and ultimately to your money. As always, spend a little time, do a little research, and protect yourself so you don't become the next victim of identity theft. I'm Jim for Stickley on Security. Have a great day.